What's up? It's Lauren and welcome back to my channel. So I want to talk to y'all about the book that I finally finished reading after like forever. But that doesn't mean it wasn't good. So let's go ahead and get started. The book that we're going to talk about is Night Film by Marisha, Marisha Pessel. I'm not sure how to say her name, but yeah, you're going to have to, I'm from the South, so y'all are going to have to deal with how I say it. If I say it wrong, please let me know. Anyways, um, I loved this book. I, um, I mean, I, I'm not experienced in the, like, mystery thriller sort of book, like, a genre. I've only read two. I've read The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins, and I've read Oath of Honor by Lynette Easton, which I think the second book to that series is out. I need to go look. That was a really good book. Both of them are, they were, for me, they were more, like, mildly, like, soft mystery thrillers. Um, maybe um, Girl on the Train a little bit more. More so than more, not soft, but more mystery than um, Oath of Honor. But I still loved all of them. But this was sort of like, I guess, my first hardcore uh, mystery thriller. And I absolutely loved it. Um, I, I thought that she had a way with words. Very... Fitzgerald-ish in the way that she words her sentences. Um, if you've read any Fitzgerald, particularly The Great Gatsby, which is the one that I, which is my, my favorite, yeah, I mean my favorite so far of Fitzgerald's books, like, ever. I have absolutely fallen in love with his stuff. It's, oh, anyways. Um, so she's very Fitzgerald-esque about her writing. I wouldn't say she's fully on, like, you know, the, the brilliance that is Fitzgerald, but I, she has hints of his stuff in there, and I really enjoy that about her, and I appreciate that. Um, I was just completely enthralled, and I appreciate the links that she went to in this book. Um, we, and I, I, I think if she had done it in third person, um, we might not have had, it might not have given us the biggest impact that it gave, because we follow Scott McGrath, right? And... He's this investigative journalist, and he's investigating this guy named um, Stanislas Cordova. And I was like, okay, this is this is going to be pretty interesting. You know, I want to see where he goes with it um, to try and maybe solve this mystery and whatnot. Uh, the journalist aspect really stuck with me because I'm in college, I was a college journalist. I wasn't in, an investigative journalist because we don't have that. Our school paper was small um so we didn't really have that but we did have like journalism like you know maybe we were investigating something like going on at school um so that was kind of going along the lines of that but so that aspect kind of intrigued me and then the whole like mis mystery behind Cordova was very I was like, I want to know more about this man. I want to know more. And then we got to know Ashley through some of these characters. And I was like, now, now I want to know, you know, just like he does. And there's a line in here where it's like, you know, once you've started finding Cordova, you know, there is no stopping it. It inhabits your mind. It seeps into your mind and it, it, it gets you. And it, it really did, you know, it, she had this way of getting to us readers, or at least me personally, as a reader, she got into my head. So I wanted to help figure out and try and work out what it was exactly that was going on at this place. Um, I, there is one particular part at uh, when he's at Stanislas Cordova's house, which is a big mystery to everyone, especially him. Um, they go and like go on a search or whatever and um, this is going to kind of be a spoiler also um, if you have claustrophobia which I kind of do actually no I do um, if you have claustrophobia I would probably skip over the part that I'm getting ready to talk about in the book um, because it will give you um, anxiety it will give you it it will make you feel bad so um if you haven't read it and you don't want a spoiler mute it right now i'm going to put the book down and we're going to talk about it and when i put the book back up that's when you can unmute it 
unmute it. I mean, mute it now. Mute it now. Okay, so those of you who stuck around and who have read the book, there's this one part where Nora, Hopper, and Scott all go into the peak together to go search for, um, like, clues or uh, whatnot, what, what have you, of this Stanislas Cordova character. And he is very mysterious, like I said. Um, they all hatch this plan. Scott ends up getting separated from Nora and Hopper, and he ends up going to this warehouse. And in this warehouse, you know, you go through the different sets, like, of uh, Cordova's films. There's one, um, and it's kind of like you take him through each and every one of them. And then he comes out, but he ends up going over this bridge. It has a lot of witchcraft influences in it, which I could have dealt without. Um, and I'll explain this to the non-spoiler people as well, but um, long story short, he gets caught by somebody, and I'm not sure whether it's in his head or if it's in his, if it's really real or if it's a hallucination, but he's in this box. And I'm getting like, my heart rate's rising just talking about it, but um, he gets in this box and um, it's this hexagonal kind of thing and he's like, you know, trying to get out, trying to figure out where it is and he stomps through and he's stomping through all of these boxes and he gets, once he stomps through, he gets into another box and then once he gets through, he gets into another box and it's kind of like one of those Russian like dolls that you know, you have the big one and you undo it and then there's a smaller one and then you undo that one and then there's a smaller one inside and then, yeah. It's one of those. I don't know what the name of those dolls are. But, um, just reading that part, um, it really made me, I had to take a step back for a minute and I just had to breathe because I felt my heart rate going up. I started panicking and I was like, we're not going to do this right now. We're going to just sit back. We're going to relax. I'm going to get out. But she, alright, I'm back, sorry. Um, I do feel like she has the ability to put us in the story with her. Um, and it's quite amazing how she's able to do that. And I, I think a lot of her symbolism and her foreshadowing is so great. Um, because about midway through she foreshadows something that you're like, maybe could this happen at the end? And I even put notes in there and I was like, hey, you know, could this person have killed Ashley? Or could this person have killed Ashley? Ashley Cordova, um, if y'all don't know, she is Stanislaus Cordova's um, daughter. And she was 24 and she was found dead. And that's what Scott and Nora and Hopper are all trying to figure out is who killed her. And all of them in some way, shape, or form have a connection to Ashley. Hopper, I think, met her earlier. Nora doesn't really know her. She just kind of is like, looks at her as a mysterious figure and is like, I want to figure this out. And then we have, um, what's his name? And then we have Scott, who kind of runs into her when he's out at night. So, this is just, I don't know, I loved this book for my first Marisha Pestle book, or Pestle book, um, and for my first kind of like delve deep into mystery thriller, it was really, really great. Um, so that's why I gave it 4.5 stars on Goodreads, because I absolutely loved it. I was addicted the whole time. Um, I will warn you that those of you who are just now joining us <laughs> from the spoil, you know, from the spoiler free, um, there are influences of witchcraft and, um, dark, like, magic. I try to ignore it. I'm a Christian, so I try and stay away from that stuff. For me, it's just a story, and it ties in with the story. Um, I, yeah. So I will warn y'all that there is, is witchcraft in it. Um, so if that bothers you, then I would definitely recommend to not pick it up. But for me, I can, I can distinguish, for me, I'm able to distinguish what's fake and what's not fake so um and and what's real and and you know I'm, I'm confident enough in my faith to not believe in that so um yeah 
but other than that I just I, I, I loved it and the ending was really good um I kind of if you are good at foreshadowing or at t telling when she's foreshadowing then you'll be able to kind of predict the ending maybe um which was a little less fun I did feel like it was a little hard to get through towards the end um because he Scott goes in and meets with someone and she tells him the whole story of everything and then after that it's it's just a little like I, I, I'm sitting there like okay well you know I wish we could hurry up the next like 10 chapters just rush through them because and I did skim over some of them because I was like okay well you, you know you just told us everything that we needed to know I'm happy I don't know about y'all but you know I'm happy with it and you know I don't care how the, how it ends because I have all the answers that I want now um and but she did leave us you know at the end with with something pretty interesting and I thought it was really good um but I feel like yeah it was pretty long because this is about 580 some pages so it's a pretty big book and I feel like some could be edited out especially the ending um I was just wanting to rush to just get finished with like the last 10 chapters um but really it's really cool and I, I think she plays a lot with like illusions and and you know she takes us as well as the characters on a mind bend you know she's just she's gotten in her head and I literally last night when I finished reading this I usually can move on to a book pretty fast and I can usually move on to activities pretty fast like I'm in the middle of writing right now and I could not function without like I had to get this out so that's why I, I sat down and did this because hopefully once I get this out I can stop nagging my brain and I can move on to other things but this was really 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 good and I enjoyed it and I really hope that y'all pick it up um she also has a new book out called Never World Awake which I believe is her first YA so I'm really hoping to go get that as well but Night Film was absolutely yes I am keeping this I keep books that I like I'm keeping this book um, this was so good, and I'm so glad that I picked it up at, um, my local bookstore, my used bookstore. Um, and I'd heard about it from Emma Books. Or, yeah, I think Emma Books or Emma Reads. I can't remember which one. Um, but I remember reading about, or hearing her talk about it and rave about it, and she just actually did an interview with Marisha as well, so go check that out. But I thought it was absolutely great. There were some points in there where I was like, oh, let's just skip through. Which is why I gave it a four and a half instead of five stars. Because of the fact that, you know, it was a little hard to get through at the very end there. But other than that, and it's really interesting. Cause it's captivating. It gives you, like, these these pictures and everything. It's very, it's very really journalisty kind of things. And I enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah. Four and a half stars. Marisha Pestel, you did a phenomenal job. I even tweeted about it last night. And it, she, and she tweeted me back, which was really cool. But, um, it's just, yeah. I No words can describe how I feel about the amazingness of this book. She's a genius. She takes you through this mind bend with the characters. So you're like... Also, you know, you can't sleep like the characters, you can't eat like the characters do, and like, it's absolutely crazy, but the end, it all figures out, and I love it, and you kind of had this cleansing revolution, or resolution, when you reach the end, just like, I guess you could kind of say our character, Scott, does, so, um, yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed that, I hope y'all go and pick up, pick it up, pick it up pick it up please oh my gosh it's so good I enjoyed it um probably I mean I'm not an expert in mystery thriller but so far that is my number one favorite um out of the books that I've read um I hope y'all go and check out some of my other videos I'll be doing another review soon I also wanted to check in with y'all and let y'all know about the book that I'm reading next as tradition after every review I always talk to y'all about what I'm reading next and that is The Land of Stories The Enchantress Returns by Chris Colfer. This is the second book in the Land of Stories. I read the first one. It's called The Wishing Spell. I thoroughly enjoyed it. A review is coming up 
um, soon about this, so stay tuned. But this is the second book that is in the series, and I've been searching everywhere for it fin in, in my used bookstore because I hardly ever buy new books anymore. Finally, I found it, so I'm very happy about that. Um, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Also, I have a Twitter, it's Live Loves Book 17. My Instagram is Live Loves Book 17, and my Goodreads is Lauren Live Loves Book 17. Follow me on all of those um, outlets. Be sure and subscribe. If y'all liked any of the points that I made, go check it out. I mean, go leave a comment down below. If you didn't like the book, leave it down below. Or if you're just merely interested in, in, in finding out, you know, or in, in buying it. Let me know down below. Um, yeah. I hope y'all have a great day. That is it, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.